Y'all are an answer to my prayers and my obedience unto the Lord of what I believe He called us to do. And if you have a Bible, you'd like to turn to Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1. You ought to, most of you, if you read your Bible, you know Genesis 1 and 1. And their songs, again, no preparation this morning except all being obedient unto the Father and the leading of the Holy Spirit. I believe their songs go right along with what I'm talking about this morning. Uh, because I usually I like to, first of all, have the anointing and uh, the Holy Spirit upon us when we share. And I, I like for the messages to be relevant. And since we're out here on this beautiful day, uh, I always like to share something about what we're doing and what we're experiencing as we are out here. And this morning I want to talk about, we talk about it as a, what a day that'll be. Well, it's more than a beautiful day. I'm going to, I want to share that with you. It's more than a wonderful and beautiful day. In Genesis 1 and 1, it says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God hovered over the face of the waters. And then God said, Let there be light. There was light. And God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness, and God called the light day. And the darkness he called night. So the evening and the morning was the first day. Then God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let the, it divide the waters from the waters. Thus God made the firmament, and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. And it was so, and God called the firmament heaven, so that the evening and the morning were the second day. And God said, let the waters under the heavens be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters he called the sea, and God said it was good. Again, I know you're enjoying what we're experiencing out here in God's beautiful country, camping. I love and enjoy camping. We, as I said last week, some didn't believe me, but me and my wife have been married 40 years, and, and um, we've been camping there since. We started out the tent with the boys as they grew up and been down here coming to St. Andrews for about 20 something years and just enjoy coming and camping. To me camping uh, just brings a person back to reality. It gets us away from all the things around us. It brings us back to the simple things in life, to what is real and actually I feel to what is important in life. I was just talking to a young man they were leaving this morning and we were talking about how wonderful it is that out here camping nobody locks anything we just it's just like simple everybody trusts everybody everybody seems to be good people when you're out camping and um, enjoy it and I know you do or you wouldn't be here because either you like it or you don't that's the fact about camping uh, before I supposedly retired a few months ago I became a full-timer in the RV, it seemed that every time I turned around, it was Sunday. I was pastoring a, a church, and and of course we had the two services on Sunday, and the Wednesday night service, and because I had to prepare messages every time to preach, so people don't understand the preparation that goes into preaching, the time, the study, and the prayer. So it felt like there were only two days in a week. That was Sunday and Wednesday. Every time I turned around, I'd better be ready to share. And I thought, well, sure enough, once I get out, you know, that'll change. And it won't seem like there's just two days in a week. But it still feels like time is flying by, even though we're out here camping. Because, you know, we all just have 24 hours in a day. We just read about the day. There's 24 hours in a day and seven days in the week. You can be rich, you can be poor, you can say, you're related to some royalty or something, but guess what? You still have only 24 hours in a day. And as we just read, God took that which was void, which was empty, He took that which was nothing, and He made a day. He took nothing and made a day. Then He made a, another day, we read. Then, as you continue reading, He made another day. And today it's almost 6,000 years since he made that first day. So he has made, I figured out, a little over 2 me billion days since that first day. He keeps making these days. 
and no wonder the psalmist David I, I think I was thinking along this line I said David must have had an experience like we're having he just uh, was looking out as I get out and walk our little cocker spaniel in the morning about four o'clock or five o'clock in the morning I see the sun rising I just what a day what a day the Lord has given us we are blessed we are truly blessed and I think David was having one of those experiences in Psalms 118 21 he says I will praise you for you have answered me and have become my salvation the stone which the builder rejected has become the chief cornerstone and listen to this this was the Lord's doing he says this is the Lord's doing around us it is marvelous in our eyes this is the day the Lord has made and what should we do we will rejoice and be glad in it praise the Lord I, I think that's why you're here you are the type of people who rejoice in what God has given us so everything that we enjoy actually started with a day right it started with a day you may be enjoying your tent you may be enjoying a an RV, some of you in condominiums or hotels, um, but you've been enjoying travel. You can travel anywhere you'd like to, you, by car, by boat, by plane. You enjoy electricity today around us and all the powerful devices or little devices we have. We enjoy the electronics and the smartphones and all that communication stuff we have because God created a day. You realize that? We should rejoice in that God created the day. He created you and me for Him, the Bible teaches. The Bible says He desires for us to love Him with an awesome love that He has loved us. There's no greater love than the love that God has for mankind who He created in His image. But you know, the Bible teaches our selfishness, our pride, which according to the Bible is sin, has destroyed that relationship that God wanted us to have and in Romans 5 12 he says therefore just as though one man sin entered in the world and death through sin and thus death spread to all men because all of us have sinned you know all of us have sinned and to redeem that relationship that God wanted to have with us God created a day of redemption God created a day when God would give his only son. John 3, 16 and 17 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world, that us, through him, might be saved. So God created a day when Jesus was born of a virgin. God created a day that he would live many days, 33 and a half years, that he would live a sinless life. God created a day that his son would be crucified upon the old rugged cross. Romans 5, 8 says, but God demonstrated his love toward us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us, for that relationship. Romans 6, 23 says, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. Again, I will remind you, a gift is something you have to receive. It's not forced upon you. God made preparations that all of us can have the joy of knowing Him personally. If we'll receive that gift, repent of our sins, because the wages of sin is death, but His gift is to us as He went to the cross. So can you agree with me today that today is more than a beautiful day? It's more than a beautiful day. It's an awesome day. As David said in Psalms 118 again, I'm just going to read this over and over so you get it. I will praise you. I will praise you for you have answered me, he says, and have become my salvation. The stone which the builder rejected has become the chief cornerstone. And this was the Lord's doing, he said. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Again, you see, it was a day just like today, a day with 24 hours in it, that Jesus left glory. He left all that it, there with the Father to come down, and it was a day that he placed himself, just like this day, in the Virgin. 
It was a day just like this, with 24 hours that he was born in the stable in a body to have a body just like you and I have today, a body that would experience pain, it would experience temptation. God give us, give him 33 and a half years of days that he lived a sinless life. And it was a day just like this day with 24 hours that he was crucified, that he was hung between the heavens and the earth because mankind said he was not worthy of earth or heaven. They stripped him of everything he was. They beat him so he was not recognizable as a man as he hung there upon the cross. It was a day just like today that he gave his all that you and I could have life and have it more abundantly. But it was also a day just like this day, a day with 24 hours that he arose victoriously and now he is sitting at the right hand of the Father. And you know what? It will be a day just like this day. A 24-hour day. Someday, maybe soon, that the Heavenly Father is going to look over at the Son and He's going to say to the Son, Go get your bride. Go get your bride. Go get the church. And Jesus is going to split that eastern sky. And those that are His are being called up to be with Him. Now that brings me back to the scriptures we've been sharing just about every time we get together. I just can't get away from Revelations 21 here lately because it seems like everything brings me back to that. When we Today as we're talking about a day, there's going to be a day. It's going, it's going to be a 24-hour day. And you know, every one of us gets 24 hours every day. Nobody gets less or, or more. Now one day every one of us is going to get less. There's going to be that day we're going to get less than 24 hours in a day. It may be when we breathe that life's breath. And it may be that day that the Lord comes and splits that eastern sky. And Revelations 21, 1 through 8, again describes something about that day. And that time it's going to happen when it'll be the last day. When there'll be no more time. He says, now I saw the new heaven and the new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no more sea. Then I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes, there shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. Then he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said to me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said to me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give of the fountain of the water of life for you to him who thirsts. He who overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But cowardly, unbelieving, abominable, murderers, sexuals, immorals, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second day. I praise the Lord for this beautiful day, don't you? It is more than a beautiful day, though. It is more because it's a day the Lord has given us. And I pray that you will rejoice in this day and all days to come from hereafter. Now, if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, if you don't have that personal relationship, that you can't get up in the morning as I do. I love to get up in the morning early. I, I know a lot of people are not early morning people. But I love to get out and just look out and say, Good morning, Lord. Thank you for another beautiful day. If you don't have that relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, I would enjoy the privilege to introduce you to my Lord and Savior. I invite you to stay. We'll be around a while here. And uh, we would love for you to just come and talk to us and let us share with you how that you can know him as your personal Lord and Savior. And if you do know him, I always like to hear a good testimony. How, where God brought you to when he brought you into the family of God and you were born again. I'd love for you to share with us. But I want you to remember, this is the day the Lord has made. 
and we should live and rejoice in it. We should live like Christ died yesterday, like he arose this morning. Wouldn't that be great? And that he's coming back tomorrow. That's the way we should be living this day. Would you pray with us? Father, we love you. And thank you, Lord, for this privilege to come before your holiness again. Again, thank you for this wind that is blowing. Thank you for the sunshine. Thank you for the green grass and the, the blue waters and the blue sky. Thank you, Lord, for those who have shared their, their talents and their testimony and the gift of learning and memorizing your word. Thank you, Lord, and I pray that you have been glorified. And, Lord, I pray that each one here has been blessed today as we honored you. And if there are some here who do not know you as their Lord and Savior in a personal way, I pray that you would give them the courage, Lord, to speak to us or someone they know who knows you as their Lord and Savior and say, please introduce me to your Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you again, Lord. May you be glorified. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Thank y'all for coming this morning.